Hello and welcome back to Amateur Radio DMR Programming. My name is Mike, K0NGA, and this will be the second video in what I assume to be a three-video series about setting up a hotspot to use for DMR. In the first video, we chose a frequency uh, based on a band plan for our state. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to set up channels in our radio ahead of time so that when our hotspot is set up, we can immediately hear whether or not things are working. So the one thing to uh, remember from our the, the first video, if you didn't see it, is that we chose a simplex frequency. So that means that our transmit and receive frequencies are going to be the same thing, and that's how we will set up our channels here in our software. And I've got the Connect System software here is what I typically use. As most people know, uh, each radio will have its own software, and even though the concepts are the same, they're typically called generally the same thing. They do appear in different areas of the software. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And if you've seen my programming video, you know what we need to start with is the talk groups. So we're going to go down here in the software and find our talk groups, which will be in our contact list. And then the uh, Connect System software that's under conventions, DMR services contact. And as you can see, I've already put some contact uh, information in here are, are some calls, some group calls, and, and a private call, which I'll explain in a moment to set this up ahead of time so that you don't sit here watching me type. So these are our talk groups that we're going to set up for our hotspot. Uh, and some of these are for RAGCHU and talking to folks and getting out into Brandmeister. Some of these have some utility on them. Um, and uh, so I chose a sample of this just for this video to go through. So we have our ref BM, uh, Brandmeister reflector. That's what BM reflector means uh, on call nine. And if you've used Brandmeister a lot, you know what that really is entailed. Um, also some things like the parrot, which we'll talk about in a minute. We'll come back on nine, those kind of things. So uh, generally speaking, you want that in there. That is group call nine. And then we have some select talk groups. We have worldwide 91, TAC 310, which is 310, USA, which is 3100. Colorado, which is the state I'm in, which is 400. And then further down, we have Mountain West, which is 31062. Uh, some of these others here have some functions. So the unlink is that if you've keyed up on a channel, on a, on a talk group, uh, on a repeater's time slot, and you want to release that talk group before the 15-minute uh, timeout period ends, you can key up on 4,000, and it'll, it'll uh, disconnect the talk group, the dynamic talk group. And you've got some other things, uh, 9990 uh, private call is a parrot call. So if you transmit on that out to Brandmeister, it will return back your uh, your the bit audio that you spoke. So if you speak in and say K0NGA mic, you'll, there'll be a pause. And then back to your radio, you'll get K0NGA mic. And you can tell uh, how your audio is getting into Brandmeister. Uh now, the next two are specific to the open spot. Uh, as far as I know, they're specific to the open spot. There's a query, a 9998 call to a group called 9998. That will return the connector information from the open spot. And then echo, which is 9999, which is a local voice test from the radio to the hotspot and back. So uh, unlike Parrot, which goes to Brandmeister and then back, this just goes to the hotspot and back to your radio so you can check your audio at the hotspot. So all of these are, are some talk groups. Again, you can have as many talk groups as here as you want, but you need to start by choosing which talk groups you want to have in your radio ahead of time, which ones you may want to talk to on Brandmeister, and put those in here first to begin. So that's our first step. Now, the second step, as you know, is we need to, before we can create a channel, uh, effectively we need to create our receive groups. Now, I deviate here from my normal uh, standard operating procedure, which is one talk group per receive group because of scanning, uh, the concept of non-static talk groups in Brandmeister really makes scanning kind of a, a moot point when you start talking about Brandmeister. So in this case, we don't typically have to worry about scanning. So we can make this easy on ourselves when we're creating our channels. And the way you do that is just to put all your Brandmeister talk groups into one receive group and call it done. This is perfectly allowable. It is it it works and it makes things a lot easier. So you don't have to reprogram things later. And unless you really really want to dig into the fun that is trying to do scanning on Brandmeister repeaters, this is perfectly cool. All right. Again, it's not what my normal uh, mo for doing static talk groups on repeaters that only have a certain amount of talk groups. This is, you know, again, for Brandmeister, 
is a, actually a good thing at this point. So later on, when you add new talk groups to your contact list, all you have to do is come in and add those talk groups to your existing singular receive group. And now all your existing channels have those updated talk groups in there. And that is so that when you tune into your hotspot, uh, if there is another talk group transmitting out to out your hotspot, any channel that you tu tune to will pick it up and you'll be able to tell, hey, your, your hotspot is transmitting and uh, you won't be able to talk until that talk group is done. So it makes this a very, very good thing. Now, be aware that there are some radios that have a limit to the number of talk groups you can put in your receive groups. You will have to work around that yourself on how you organize that. Uh, but a lot of the more recent ch Chinese radios don't typically have a, a big limit on the number of uh, talk groups you can put in your receive group. Uh, just be aware you may run to a limit. Uh, so appro approach those carefully. Now we have our talk groups and our receive groups. We can start creating our channels. So here is our default digital channel. And uh, we're going to start with, I guess, uh, let's start with Worldwide. So just to remind us what we're doing, we can come down to our transmit contact and say, hey, we're going to do this as Brandmeister Worldwide. So since this is on my hotspot, I call this Hotspot Worldwide. We're going to do HS Worldwide, however you want to term it. But this is typically what I use as my nomenclature. Now, a couple of things. Color code. Uh, your hotspot may be different. Your mileage may vary. On the open spot, the default color code that the open spot is going to use is color code one. So if you don't want to have to go in and change that on your open spot before you can start doing things, you leave the color code on your channel to one, which is fine. Uh, the repeater time slot, uh, the hotspot only has one time slot. Other hotspots may be different, but for the open spot, there's only one time slot and that is time slot one. So you can leave that at time slot one, okay? We're not doing scan lists or anything because again, scan lists are kind of useless with Brandmeister. More on that uh, if you see me at a convention or whatnot, but generally speaking, we're not going to be doing scanning with Brandmeister or our hotspot. Uh, so a, a, a similar to our transmit contact, we can choose our receive group, which is BM all. So now we have everything in there. We don't have to worry about it. Um, and now for our, our frequency. So as I mentioned in my vid previous video, I chose 4462125 as my... Uh, simplex frequency that was on my state's band plan as a digital voice narrow band simplex so I chose that for my list and as you can see I put it both in the transmit and receive so that um, uh, it, again this would make it a simplex frequency now technically speaking this channel is done uh, you can do the you know uh, color code free and set your time like timer to whatever you want I usually do 120 seconds and whatnot but now this particular channel is done. I typically save at this point. Now we have our channel set up. Adding channels now becomes very, very easy because we've added a channel already, right? So what we do is we hit add. Now we can take our existing channel and copy it and then paste it onto the new channel. And now everything came over. The only thing that it didn't update was the channel alias or the channel name. So I'm going to do this hot spot Colorado. And now the only thing I have to change besides the name is the transmit contact. So go down here at Brandmeister Colorado. And now this channel is done. So I only have to change the alias so I know what channel this is. Everything else is already set up because they don't change because it's a hot spot. So the color code doesn't change. The slot doesn't change. The frequency doesn't change. And our receive group doesn't change because we put all of our talk groups in the receive group. So by doing that, it makes this process super, super simple. So I can add a couple of more, and we're going to copy that. We're going to paste these onto these next two channels. We go to this first channel. We're going to let's do this TAC 310 hotspot TAC 310. And again, the only thing we have to change is here. Here's our TAC 310. Then we'll go to our next channel. Uh, what do we want to do here? Let's see what else we have left here. Let's do USA. So that's, we have that on USA, so we're going to have Hotspot USA. And it really is that simple to do. So now we've got some channels, and you can, make again, make as many channels as you want. Uh, now we need to create a zone so we can actually load this thing into our radio once we get going. So I will call this Hotspot, because I like to make things really esoteric. 
uh, in this software, you actually have to add it. There has to be a channel in there. So before you can delete this out of there, you have to add these others in. So go ahead and add them in, remove that one. And now there you are. So now you've got your hotspot channels created. You've got them added to a zone. You're now ready to upload this into your radio, assuming again that you have all the other stuff done in your, your code plug. So really the process again, add your Brandmeister talk groups to your contact list. And then I recommend again for ease of use, adding your talk, all of your Brandmeister talk groups into the same receive group if you can. Then you need to create your channels. Again, typically color code one, slot one, because they're hotspots and those are defaults. Your defaults may, may vary based on your hotspot. Check with your hotspot documentation. A simplex channel frequency to what you're going to set your hotspot to. And we already chose that again from our first video there. And then we choose our receive group list, which has all of our talk groups in it. And then we just set the talk group that we want to transmit to on, on our hotspot to there. You add those into a zone. And now you're ready. You can save this and upload this to your radio. And you're set to go. So if there any other if you have any other questions on this or if there's something that I missed in the video, please feel free to comment down in the comments below. Uh, the next video will be actually setting up the hotspot. We're going to set up a new hotspot 2 from Shark RF. And I'll show you how to, uh, how to get that going. They've made it a lot easier uh, now that they have the Wi-Fi version and the, the firmware has been updated. It's really slick. So we'll see you next time. Have a good day.